Good morning good people, my name is Pavel Oliva and in this video I'm gonna teach you the basics of Materium Maker which is an open source alternative to Substance Painter and Designer but in one application and also we'll be making this stylized flowing lava material from scratch so without further ado, let's get into it. Hmm. So before we start working on the material itself I would like to show you this thing which is the graph of the material. And if you are coming from Substance this isn't anything new for you. Basically I start with the height map and height map is the 3D-ness of the surface. It basically determines the shapes that creates the surface. Then I'm using the height map to uh, create uh, the albedo, which is this section. And albedo basically stands for the color of the material itself. And then there's this part, which is the roughness. And roughness stands for basically how the material is or isn't reflective. And then there is this material output node and basically it outputs anything which is connected into this node into our 3D view. And the last thing is the smoke up node, which I will cover in the moment. When you open the material maker for the first time, this is exactly how it won't look like. And why? Because I am using a dark theme that you can set up here in the edit, in the set theme and set it to dark because by default it's set to default. Another thing is that I'm using the custom window layout that looks something like this. I have a 2D view here, I have a 3D view here, also I have the library here, histogram and of course the main node tree. Feel free to use the default one or you can copy this one, it really depends on you but for this tutorial and probably for the future tutorials I will be using this one because I'm really used to it. So let's create your first node. You can add the new nodes by right clicking into node tree graph and in my case, I'm gonna search for mockup. Note that you won't find this node inside Matter Maker by default because it's my custom node group. And I'm gonna tap inside to show you what it contains. It contains a lot of nodes that you can find by default in Matter Maker. And the purpose of this node group is to save me some time. So whenever I'm starting and working on a new material, I don't have to plug all of these nodes manually, but instead I can just plug in just one node and everything will be set up for me correctly. And the node there is for me so I can better visualize the material itself. So as you can see it uh, has this nice curvature, ambient occlusion, settings for roughness, color and other stuff. It's a custom node group and it's indicated by this pencil icon. To get the mockup node you can go to file, load material from the website and then you will get this list of materials, utilities, generators and other stuff made by the Matter Maker community. Now I'm gonna search for mockup, click OK and then our material will open in our new tab. What you wanna do is to click on the mockup node, then go to the tools, click on add select node to the library, user library and then you can name it however you want. In this case I'm gonna call it mockup and click OK. Then you can close the tab because we don't need it anymore. Now if you right click and search for mockup the node should appear. So now you can use it for the further projects. There's a couple of things I would like to change before we actually start working on the material itself. First thing is to change the basic shape to a cylinder because I think it uh, better captures the reflections on the material. Then I would like to change uh, the UVs to 3x2 to prevent the stretching because this is how the current shapes in Matter Maker are UV mapped, but it will change in the future. As you can see, there is something wrong on the edge. And it's because the default static PBR material is using parallax occlusion mapping, which is a way to display the 3D of the material. But I would like to change it to have an actual geometry rather than this effect. I'm gonna right click to static PBR material and change it to static PBR material displays. And then we get this, which isn't any much better what we had before. And why? Because we don't have enough geometry to display our uh, material. So I'm gonna go here into model, select configure and check this tessellated options. And it will tessellate our model so we have enough geometry to work with. Keep in mind that it might take some time depending on your machine and also on uh, the resolution of the model. You can change the resolution of the tessellation in edit, 
preferences and in 3D preview uh, tessellation detail you can set this number higher. I have set up this to 1024 but this is a really high number I would suggest to use like uh, like a 256 or something like this and then click OK and you can tessellate it again. And the last thing I would like to change is the environment. As you can see I have a lot of environments here that you can all of them uh, download from the official Matter Maker website. Or you can create your own environments here in Tools, Environment Editor. So this is the Environment Editor and you can basically upload any HDRI from HDRI Heaven for example. You can just copy paste the link to the environment, copy paste it here and then it will be automatically downloaded to Matter Maker folder and it will be used in the environment. As you can see, there are some artifacts on top, but this is uh, the limitation of the current topology of the shapes that comes with Matter Maker, but this will change in the future, so yeah, we will stick with this for now. As we have everything set up, let's actually start working on the material itself. So first thing I would like to do is to delete this brick node because we don't need it anymore. And as you can see in the left corner, the material is already cached, but don't worry, it will change once we plug anything into the mockup node. So I'm gonna make an anisotropic noise and I will change the scale X by 2 and scale Y to uh, 34. And this noise will give us this nice uh, horizontal gradients and also these hard edges in uh, Y axis and this is exactly what we want. I'm gonna move it here. And then I will search for warp node because we need to warp it a little bit to give it more natural look. As you can see, it does nothing because we need some input to warp our image. So I will search for FBM noise. I will plug it in. As you can see, we are getting some distortion. But I will change the noise type to Perlin, change the scale to 3 by 2 and change the iterations to 1. And this will give us this nice flowy lines and this is exactly what we are after. I will change the type to distance to top because it will give us better results, especially in high values. I will change the strength to almost 1, which give us this result. But I don't like it, so I will change the epsilon to something like 20, uh, 0.27 and it will give us this result. And if you don't like it, you can always go here to FBM noise and click on the dice, so it will give us different noises. To look at the preview of the node, you can always control left click on the node output and it will lock the output to be displayed in our 2D view. And as you can see, I'm just trying to find some seed that looks nice. And also I would like to lower this strength a bit so it's not warped so much. To introduce a little bit more randomness, I would like to warp it a little bit more, but for this one I would like to create a transform node, because I would like to transform it only in one direction. So I will plug it here, and as you can see we have some clipping on the edges, but don't worry, you can just change the mode to repeat and everything will be fixed. So now I will copy this FBM noise and I will change the scale to 3 by 1 and change the iteration to 2. Then I will plug it into translate X and Y and I don't know why but I don't need it in X because the translation I will do is really minimal but yeah this is what I've done. So I will change the trans translate Y to something like 0 0.2 and this totally fine and as you can see we are getting more natural look. So now I will select everything, move it a little bit here so we have more space and then I will make a blur node, set the resolution to 2k because this is the resolution we are working on, this is before, this is after and uh, we need this Gaussian blur to give us some slope because the next node will be multivarp and multivarp is based on the slope so without slope basically this node won't work because it does not like harsh edges 
I will plug the Gaussian blur into top and the bottom input and I will set the mode to blur and as you can see we are getting some sort of inflation effect. So this is before, this is after and to help you visualize what's going on we will utilize our mockup node and bam, this is what we are getting. Now I will create a brightness node but actually I don't think it's needed but uh, for this I'm just trying to lower the contrast because I think it's a little bit more contrasty and because it will give us a lot of warpiness in our high frequency noise that we will work on later in this video. So this is our height map. I will select everything, I will move it and I will search for comment. And it will create this nice border around this section. So now I will move a little bit down there and we will start working on our details. I will start with the sphere, move it here. And I will search for FBM noise as well. Yeah, it's all about noises. I will set the type to Perlin. And set the scale to 4x2. And change the iterations to 4. And the persistence to 1. We are getting this nice vertical noise. And this is what we want because it will help us to form these flow lines later on. So now we'll now we'll blend it together. Let's plug the sphere into the bottom input and the FBM noise to the top input and change the blend mode to multiply. Basically multiplication means in terms of uh, procedural generation that you are lowering the height map one picture using the second picture. And so I will plug it here so you can see what we are getting. We are getting the sphere and then if we blend the noise over, we are getting this distorted sphere. And I know it doesn't look really great, but it will be totally fine. And as you can see, there's this harsh edge. So I will use a math node and I will change it to smooth step to get rid of these harsh edges a little bit. So this is before. So we are getting this. And so, let's finally create some noise. So I will create a tiler. I will plug it here. And as you can see, we are getting some sort of noise. I will change the tiling to 20 by 20. And we are getting this weird overlaps. And this is caused by how tiler works. Basically, if you have a lot of overlapping shapes, you will get these artifacts and to prevent this you can just you can just change the overlap to free and it will be fixed in terms of performance cost. So now let's change the scale x something like 0.12 by 0.11 and change the random offset to 1. Also, I would like to change the random scale to something like almost 0.05 to make it more random. And to preview what's going on, I will plug it here into the mockup node. And so we are getting this strange shape. I know it doesn't look pretty, but don't worry, it will get better. To add more details, I will create a dirt node. I will move it here, change the resolution to 2K. It's fine and I will change the type to 3 and then we will blend these two noises together. Plug the tiler to the bottom socket and the dirt to the top socket. Now change the blend mode to difference. Basically what difference does takes the top input and everything which is white is subtracted from the bottom input. And to see what's going on I will plug it here to the mockup node. And yeah, we are getting a lot of noise, which is not what I want, because it's too uniform. So now we will create some mask. 
And yeah, you guess it, we will create the FBM noise for this one. I will change the type to Perlin, set the scale to 10 by 10, and change the iterations to 4 because it's a mask, so we don't need so many iterations. And I will change the persistence to some lower value, something like 0.3, to make the transition a little bit more smooth. Also, I will create a step node and I will show you the effect later. Now I will connect the FBM noise into the mask input of the blend. And voila, this is what we are getting. We are getting some smooth areas and also some areas with the noise. And that's when the tone step uh, node will come in handy because now with this node, we'll be able to determine the transition and also how much of the dirt noise we would like to introduce in our bigger noise, let's say. So I will change the value to something like 0.7 and I will replace this input and boom, we are getting this. And this is exactly what I want. We have some smooth areas and also some areas with high frequency noise. And so this will be our details. So I will select everything and I will frame it using comment node as usual. I will change the color to yellow and double click and comment it to something like details. Yeah. And so we have two noises. We have this one, the bass noise, the big shapes, and also the noise we've just created. So now it's time to combine these two together. For this, we will use transform, not blend, but transform, because we will use the bass shape or the flow lines to warp our noise that we've just created. I will change this to repeat. And then we will use the main shapes in our transform X and Y axis. To make our graph a little bit more tidy, we can use reroute node. So I will create one and I will connect it here. And then I will connect it into translate X and Y. It's just a visual representation. So we don't have to have like a million of connection lines over each other. So now I will plug this into the mockup node and now let's warp it a little bit. I will use a value of 0.135 for X and 0.07 for Y direction. And so we get this wild noise and yeah, it's too much. It's too noisy and it's too uniform. And so we'll use this noise and we'll blend it on top of our base shape to get some definition of bigger shapes in combination with some high frequency noise. So let's do it now. For this, we'll have to create a blend node as usual. And plug the big shapes into the bottom socket to the background layer. And the high frequency noise to the top layer, to the foreground. I'll just move it a little bit here. I will reconnect these two nodes. And now we are getting this. This is of course too much. Also, we'll change the blend mode to multiply. And change the opacity or the scale to something like 0.03. And yeah, we have this definition of these bigger shapes. But also this nice details here and there. And this is exactly what we want. And basically this is our height map for our material. So now let's work on the albedo of the material. And albedo is basically the color. So I will move here. And I will start with the tones range. Basically the first thing I would like to do is to differentiate between the dry part and the molten part. And the tones range is a really great note for this one. I will change the value to something like 0.8. With to 1. And we can keep the contrast as it is. And as you can see, we are creating the mask. But the molten part will be on top. And the dry part will be on the bottom. And this is usually how it works in nature. This mask is really great, but as you can see, it's really uniform. There are big shapes and for that, I would like to enhance the details a little bit more. So I will create the HBAO node to capture the details that are in the crevices. 
I will change the resolution to 2K. And as you can see, we can't use the height map because there's a lot of difference between our height points and the lower points. And so we will have to use this, which is our high frequency noise. Because we need to capture only these details. And so I will plug it here into the HBAO node. And yeah, we get this. And it's pretty much something I'm aiming for, but I need to change the radius to 0.09 angle bias to 0, change the depth scale to something like 0.12 and intensity to 4.25. And this is what we get. But it's inverted because we are creating second mask and basically what is white is selected and what is black is not selected so we need to invert it. So we will blend these two masks together. I will plug the tones range into the foreground and the result from the HBO to the bottom. And now let's change the blend mode to multiply and set the opacity to 1. Because we are not working on the height map anymore, because it's already done, we don't need this albedo input. So I will just disconnect it and plug our albedo masks here. And so this is what we have created so far. To make it more look like in lava, I would like to remap it using the colorize node. So I will create a colorize gradient and I will plug it here into the albedo and I will change the colors a little bit to give it that more magma look. So I will use some yellows for the light parts, then some red tones for the gray tones. And to make it more interesting and because we are doing stylized stuff, I will change the dark tones as well to give it more of a blue tint. And now I'm just tweaking the colors to something what I like. To make the lava shine, I will use this colorize again. I will plug it here and I will plug the output from the colorize into emission input of our material output. So it looks like this. And it's so bright because we are not using pure black values for the areas which are not emissive. So let's fix it here and also I will change the contrast a little bit. Also now I'm just tweaking the colors a little bit more again. And playing with the emission values in the shader. Also keep in mind that currently in Matter Maker, there are currently no post-process effects, so we don't have any bloom or something like this, but if you use it in your game engine for example and you will enable them, you will get this nice glowing effect. And so this is our albedo and this is our emission map. Keep in mind that you can change it to grayscale depending on the engine you would like to use it with. One more thing I would like to do is to introduce a little bit more details here. And for that, we will use this high frequency noise again. To make our graph nice, clean and tidy, I will use Vero node again. And then I will create this smooth curvature 2 node. Basically what this node does is that it creates these nice masks for uh, the convex and the concave shapes. So it's really great for stylized textures or masks for uh, scratches and crunches or anything like that. So now we have hit this and then we will blend it together with our albedo map. Let's create a blend node. Connect this into the bottom socket and connect this into the foreground to the top socket. And we get this, but this looks strange. And so we will use overlay and basically what the overlay blend mode does, it basically removes the gray tones, but it keeps the light tones and the dark tones and that's what we need. But this string is a little bit too much so I will lower it to something like 0.05 and we'll get this. I'm not sure if it's visible but it's there. I will connect it into the albedo and yeah as you can see we get some nice definition for details. 
but the problem is that we get dark tones inside uh, the molten part and this is weird this doesn't look good to prevent this behavior i will use this mask we have created earlier and i will simply invert it and connect this mask into the mask input in bam we don't have any black spots in our molten areas and bam as you can see we don't have any shadows in our molten areas. The last part of our material that we will be working on is the roughness. And for that, I'm gonna use Smooth Curvature 2 node because it will help us to differentiate between the crevices and the convex shapes. And usually in crevices there is dirt and other stuff that's usually more rough than the other parts. And so I will use this rear node, like it here and there. I will change the strength to something like 2.5 and change radius to 1.11 and then we'll have to invert it, because the roughness works in a way that the white parts are the rough parts and the dark tones determines where the material will be shiny. And so we need to invert it, because we are getting the opposite from the smooth curvature node. Now I will remove this connection from the mockup, because we don't need it anymore, and I will plug this into the roughness. So then we get this. Another thing that I would like to introduce is the difference between the roughness of our molten or the emissive part and the dry part. Usually the dry parts are really shiny, but the molten parts are not. And to differentiate between these two, I will create a colorize node and use this mask that we've made previously. I will move it here and then we will blend this mask and the smooth curvature together. I'm gonna set the blend mode to overlay and then I will change the opacity to something like 0.9. As you can see it's really shiny and it's because uh, our values are really strong. So I will go back to the colorize node and I will make it a little bit lighter which means it will be more rough. So now I'm just trying to eyeball some nice roughness values for the material. And so this is all for the material itself and this is how it looks like. Now for the organization purposes I'm just naming everything and trying to make the graph a little bit more tidy using the command nodes. Keep in mind that everything what we've done so far is completely procedural, which means that you can always go back to the beginning of your graph and change any parameter you want and it will be updated. So you can go for example here and change the seed of the FBM noise and we'll get a completely new variation. And I like this one a lot. We've done really nice material and now it's time to export it to an engine of our choice. To export the textures you have uh, several options. First and most convenient to use is to go to the file menu, select export material and choose one of the presets for the engine of your choice. It will export all of these maps for you based on the engine's default shader. The second option to export the textures is just right click in into the 2D view, select export and then the resolution. You need to do it all of these maps you want to export and also you can use it to export your custom maps which comes in handy when you are working with some custom shaders.
And the last option is to use export nodes. We'll set the resolution to 2K and change the suffix to ELP for albedo. We'll connect the albedo texture to the export node. I will copy it again. Connect the roughness. Copy it again. And as you can see, this is the internal format of normals in Material Maker. When you are using one of these presets in the file menu, it will be automatically converted for you to either OpenGL or DirectX, depending on the engine. But if you are using the export node, you need to convert it for yourself. And for that, we will use convert node. As you can see, you can convert it to both options, either OpenGL or DirectX. Then we will connect it to export node. And also I will rename the suffixes for rough or roughness. And NRM for normal. Of course, you can name these suffixes however you want. Then go to export material and choose one of these presets. And it will export all of the textures based on the preset plus all of the textures from the export nodes. Actually, I think it should be changed in the future and we should get a custom preset that will export only the export nodes, but it's not there yet. And so that's all for today, guys. I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below the video or you can join my Discord. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.